to ISAP tutorial. Today I'm going to teach about mental regression. Mental regression is nothing but an extension of a standard meta-analysis that investigates the reasons for heterogeneity between the studies, especially looking at the results and if they are related to one or more characteristics of the studies. The saying is that meta regression takes both linear and logistic regression equation into account. How does it differ from linear? That's a good question, um, Sonia. So the linear regression, how it differs, uh, meta regression and linear regression, how they differ each other. In a linear regression, you keep adding the variables from the individual participants data. Meta regression, the data sets belong to study rather than individual subjects. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, I know you said there's another type of meta analysis, which is subgroup analysis. I was wondering, is that superior to meta regression, but uh, inferior to meta analysis? That's an interesting question, Hassan. Um, how does subgroup analysis differ from meta regression? Very good question. Subgroup analysis is the process of comparing treatment effect for two or more variants of an intervention. The intervention remains same, but there are two or more variants. Like for example, adults differ from children, but the intervention can be just the same vaccine. And the other example I can give is male group, female group, subgroups, but the intervention could be same vaccine. So that is what a subgroup analysis is meant to reduce the heterogeneity because you are combining the F effects of similar kind of group together. So a meta regression assesses the cause and effect relationship. Meta regression also predicts the magnitude of the effect size. Any question? Um, yeah, I have a question. Um, I'm a bit confused about the phrase fixed effects. Um, do you mean that the outcome is the same with every intervention? That's an interesting question. Um, do you mean the outcome remains same with every intervention? So the proportionate outcome remains same. For example, we say that if we do so-and-so surgery, the risk of mortality will always be 5%. Let's say if you do an emergency laparotomy, heart mens. If you quote that, it will always be 5%, irrespective of any other factors. That's, that's when we draw a line saying this is a fixed effect. But in reality, it is not. You all know that. Do you agree with me? Yeah. yeah. So do you think that fixed effect model is going to address the um, cause and effect relationship? How many of you say yes? How many of you say no? Can you please raise your hand, please? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Oh, gosh. Quite a lot of S's here. <laughs> no. So no. I say no. 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 Fixed effect model is a failure basically, you know, it doesn't address cause and effect relationship. We are accepting alternate hypothesis when it is not actually having true results. It's a false positive. It's a type 1 error. Fixed effect model leads to type 1 errors, false positives, or false discoveries. And the regression equation. And I'm going to show you some live demo of the equation and the stat. Okay, thanks for Thank you.